Hello? It's showtime. Greetings YouTubers, my name is Frederick Lopez and you are on the final cut. Today we're going to be going over Scream 2, uh, right here, yeah. I'm going to give my brief synopsis, uh, the cast, and ultimately my thoughts and review of the film and whether or not I think this sequel makes the final cut. So uh, what is Scream 2 uh, about? Well, it's set two years after the original and... Sydney Prescott and Randy are attending Windsor College. They are trying to get on with their lives until a new ghost face killing spree begins. But with the help of Dewey and Gale, Sydney must find out who's behind the murders. As the body count goes up, the list of suspects go down. It stars Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, Jada Pika Smith and Omar Epps make cameos, as well as Heather Graham. Then we have Leah Schreiber joining the cast as Cotton Reary, Jerry O'Connell as Derek, and Timothy Oliphant as Mickey, along with Laurie Metcalf as Debbie Salt. Yeah, uh, that's the cast and uh, crew. It wasn't, it wasn't a bad film. It's not a bad film. Uh, considering it was released nearly less than a year after the original Scream. It was released in 1997, the original Scream was 1996, late 1996. Kevin Williamson had the idea to write Scream 2 when he was writing Scream and figured that there would be more to the story. He originally envisioned a trilogy. So upon that, he started writing the script to uh, Scream 2 when Scream 1 was being made. And it was ready to go into production. They greenlit it and uh, they started principal photography about six months after the original. Which is really fast in movie time. Especially for like a horror film like this one. Uh, but uh, Wes Craven comes back to direct it. He does a wonderful job. Wes Craven is uh, a maestro of horror films, and uh, this one is no exception. Uh, this is one of the better made horror sequels. Um, however, it doesn't feel as intense or clever as the first film, but it's just the same thing, but a bit more gorier, funnier. And set in a college setting instead of a high school setting. Uh, there's some interesting stuff in this. Uh, we really get to see more of Sidney Prescott as a character. And what I like about this film is that all the characters, we get to see where their lives are two years later, but ultimately how the events from the first film have shaped them as individuals with Dewey and uh, Gail Weathers. Uh, you get to see their relationship there. Uh, Dewey actually still suffers an injury from when he was stabbed. He's kind of limps, and that was great. Uh, work by David Arquette doing that and uh, very few films especially sequels pay attention to continuity as far as injuries are concerned and I was kind of happy that Scream did that it again uh, solidified its place as being a grounded film in reality while still being kind of meta with the horror movie rules. Randy's at college with uh, Sydney and she has shorter hair and it's kind of cool she has a caller ID and she's kind of a little bit more proactive this time around after going through uh, but being tormented by the Ghostface Killer, we really get to see a stronger Sidney Prescott in this sequel. And uh, a little bit more of her life at the college, Timothy Oliphant's character, her new uh, boyfriend Derek, Jerry O'Connell, and then also her certain uh, distrust towards him after what happened with uh, Billy Loomis in the first one. She kind of has a harder time trusting individuals and letting people close to her in life. And we get to see that. We get to see kind of more of the post-traumatic stress from the original film. Not as much as you do in Scream 3, but it's starting to kind of show signs here in this sequel. Um, it's not exactly, like, scary to the point where, like, you have to stop watching it, but there is a lot of thrills and suspense, and it does get gorier. 
I mean, they open up with a theater, and Jada Pinkett Smith and Omar Epps make a cameo as a couple going to see a movie called Stab. Now, there's a fictional film called Stab based on the events of Scream 1, and it's cool because Heather Graham makes a cameo as Drew Barrymore. Uh, the first film, the Sydney Prescott's just like, you know what, they'll probably have Tori Spelling play me, and that's who Tori Spelling plays Sydney Prescott, so Tori Spelling plays Sydney Prescott there. So there's a lot of throwbacks, and uh, the Stab sequences that were recreated uh, were directed by Robert Rodriguez, so that was pretty cool. Um, and, uh... Yeah, it's almost like a movie within a movie, so there's more of the meta sense of humor in this film that was started in the original. But uh, it gets gory. Uh, Omar Epps goes to the restroom, everybody's dressed as ghost face, and he's like listening to something in the next stall and just gets stabbed in the freaking head. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, it's gory, and then the killer is next to Jada Pika Smith, she thinks it's her boyfriend, and she just gets brutally stabbed in front of a movie theater. And people freak out, and that's where it starts. So it's just as bloody as the first, uh, a little bit more. It's more in the college setting, so of course there's a lot of college stuff. And speaking of Meadow, you get to see more of Randy, and then Joshua Jackson's character, Timothy Oliphant, they have this whole feud of, like, best movie sequels. So there's a lot of references to movie sequels, which is kind of cool because uh, Scream is a horror movie series, and the first one's always making references to other horror films. And this one kind of does the same thing, but regarding sequels. So, like, Timothy Oliphant's character, Mickey, and uh, Jamie Kennedy's character, uh, Randy, they, they talk about best movie sequels and stuff and arguing. And Mickey likes James Cameron films, so he has a hard on for Aliens and Terminator 2. And was, they are talking about Empire Strikes Back and being a planned trilogy, which is also foreshadowing Scream 3 uh, after this one. So there's just a lot of cool stuff in there uh, for movie aficionados again. Uh, we get to see more of uh, Cotton Weary. Lee Schreiber does a good job. We only got to see a brief glimpse of him in the first. I like his performance in this. Uh, he does a good job, and it's also great because it makes it seem like he is the killer. And that's one thing about this movie that I have to say is that uh, in this film, you go into this one not having any idea who the killer's going to be. And since it's like the first sequel, you don't really know where they're going to go. And uh, one thing I have to say about this film, uh, the best pro I can give it, and Kevin Williamson's uh, screenwriting with the first two films, not to talk bad about any stuff in the sequels, but one thing about this film, especially for a movie sequel, is that it still feels like everybody's expendable. You don't get a sense of feeling that everybody's going to make it to the end of the film, and that's one thing that's crazy. Not everyone does make it to the end of the film. And that's one thing that's very rare, not only for a horror movie sequel, but just a horror film to keep that sense of dread of the character surviving. Now, of course, the sequels happen, and you kind of expect certain characters to survive at the end of it. But this one really had it to a point where, like, you're not sure if Nev Campbell's Sidney Prescott is going to survive the end of the movie. And uh, it's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, before I move on to spoiler territory, it was also nice seeing Timothy Oliphant's first starring role as Mickey. Um, the other actors do a great job. Uh, and you get to have a cameo from David Warner, and he was the original choice to play Freddy Krueger, so I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but it's a little bit more fun than the first. Uh, it kind of has that 90s teen vibe, or like college vibe, and it's not bad, but something about it still has an edge, but as far as like the story and everything, it's, in my opinion, it's not the best out of the whole series. Uh, it's definitely one of the better sequels, and the thrills and suspense are superb. But, uh, it just feels kind of like, uh... And I guess it's making fun of the stuff in college and the way the shows are, but something about it doesn't feel as, uh... Something about it doesn't feel as, uh, revolutionary as the first film. I don't know how to explain it, really. The first film felt like it had something, uh that made it different than the other horror films. And this one kind of feels more like the I Know What You Did Last Summer type of films. Even though that was written by Kevin Williamson, something about this one just feels more like it's manufactured to the young adults who grew up in the 90s. Where Scream, even though it was like that, I feel like anybody could watch it. It doesn't feel like it's in a certain time. Where Scream 2 feels like it's kind of like dated in a certain way into the 90s. Which it is a 90s film, a brilliant one at that. But something about it just feels a little, like, okay. But getting to spoilers, uh, Randy's death, oh my god, that was just nuts. 
and him just going off and getting stabbed. That was unexpected, and again, the stakes are high. The deaths are crazy. Sarah Michelle Gellar's character getting like stabbed and then thrown off the the roof onto like the pavement of the a parking space in front of the house. That was crazy. Uh, Ghostface's introduction. Uh, Sydney's uh, suspicions of the boyfriend. Uh, Timothy Oliphant being a villain with the other uh, news anchor lady who's from Roseanne. Uh, she ends up being Billy Loomis's mother. That was a brilliant twist. Now originally they weren't supposed to be the killers. Uh, it was supposed to be just uh, Billy Loomis's mother with Derek and then another woman. Uh, they were going to be the killers but they had a script leak and they had to change it. And so when they filmed this, they kind of had a, uh, un, uh, they kind of had an incomplete script, which I could kind of see in some regards. Uh, but it wasn't bad by any means. Um, and I kind of liked that twist. It, it kept it kind of cooler and really made a statement. That's one thing about the Scream films. The first one had like a statement about like. Uh, horror films don't make people kill other individuals. They just make it more creative. This one's more about the media and like him wanting to be caught. If you get caught for a certain crime, you become famous. You become a star within the media and, and get a trial and everything with news coverage. And they really made an important statement here, especially in the 90s with the O.J. Simpson trial and stuff. And then uh, nowadays with the Internet and social media where everything's just like uh, covered. Uh, is very ahead of its time in that regard. Uh, mixing like our society and pop culture with movie references inside the horror genre. And that's one great thing about Wes Craven and, and, and horror films in general is that horror films you get to make political statements or just different type of statements about issues that you normally wouldn't get to talk about in other film genres. Horror films you're allowed to talk about heavy issues. And this did it in a very uh, subtle way. This did it in a very subtle way. And supposedly the voice uh, actor, he uh, was on set but they wouldn't see his face so he would actually call them so that added a bit more to the dread. I love all that stuff and then it's just like, hello Sydney, it's showtime. I love that. Um, and then uh, Dewey getting harmed, the part with the car was crazy, just different things. What would I give Scream 2? I would give it a 3 out of 5, a 7 out of 10, and a B+. It's not the worst horror movie sequel, it's actually one of the best. Uh, not many sequels in general, especially horror movie sequels, can be as good as the original. I feel like this one really lives up to the original. And uh, it's an enjoyable ride. Uh, is it my favorite? No, but it's a worthy entry in the Scream series. And uh, if you want more thrills, chills, and just more funnier stuff, and seeing where your characters you love from the original are, then definitely check out Scream 2. And if you want to see where it goes from there, then check out 3 and 4, because you would not be disappointed. Um, so that's pretty much it for my review. Uh, I know that was kind of quick, but I just wanted to get this review kind of done. And that was my favorite moments, uh, th and those were my favorite moments, and uh, yeah. I really miss Wes Craven in horror films, but he really revolutionized horror movies in the 80s and 90s and not many people get to say that and you really get to see again more of Kevin Williams' brilliant uh, screenwriting skills that you were later saying I know what you did last summer and then his work on the Vampire Diaries series. Uh, he really uh, makes a strong character out of Sidney Prescott and in horror movies again you always have a strong female heroine and it's nice seeing her have the strength and be a different character. Characters uh, develop, they progress, their arcs are no longer the same characters in each film it's also cool how there's more rules, like the horror movie rules, there's sequel rules and trilogy rules and stuff like that. So that's great. Um, anyway, that's my review. I uh, hope you enjoyed this final cut. What do you think of Scream 2? What are your favorite moments? What's your favorite Scream film? Uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, uh, check out my other videos, and yeah, look forward for more Final Cut videos. There's going to be a lot of them for Halloween. I'm going to be reviewing Scream 3, Scream 4, all the Nightmare on Elm Streets, along with Freddy vs. Jason, Interview the Vampire, Queen of the Damned, and uh, Halloween H2O. So yeah. Anyway, that's just my quick thoughts and review, and it does make the Final Cut. It cuts deeper in round two. Enjoy, guys.